I often discuss, you know, my research with other scientists who actually do, who are injured athletes or who, who are either injured athletes now or were injured athletes. Mm. Um, and, you know, their, often their question was, well, why is it bad that you're experiencing stress during injurious training? I mean, it's not what you want, mm. you know? For example, if you're running at a particular pace and you do and you do resistance training the day before, you're coming in for your run and you're trying to, you know, run at a particular pace, you know, uh, for example, uh, you're running at a particular speed, okay? Or and if, if you're running at a particular running speed or pace and your heart rate is higher than what it usually is. So you're sitting around at 150 beats per minute, but uh, you've done your weight session the day before, you're struggling a bit, you're still able to maintain that running speed and you're still able to complete the session, but you write your heart rate signal around 160, 165 beats per minute. Okay. That's indicating that's a, an indication of increased cardiovascular stress that you might not have experienced as much if you were feeling fresh. So I guess the question then is why is that bad? And I don't think it is. I think you know that has benefits. Okay. And, and there's a time and place for those, that type of approach to, um, you know, manipulating those concurrent training variables so that you're actually going in pre fatigued and you are able to complete your endurance session at a greater cost, energy cost, because that's actually applying greater cardiometabolic stress to your body. And a greater cardiometabolic stress to your body based on the basic gas syndrome. You know, ultimately, you're going to your body is going to need to adapt, and therefore your performance is improved. By principle, you know that's definitely that's fine. That completely works. What you want to avoid, however, like I said, it comes down to, to the priorities of the type of endurance training session that you have. Don't forget, if with particularly with runners, if you have a session goal that you need to meet or target zone that you need to meet. And you got these runners, middle distance, long distance. And as a coach, you tell them, okay, let's you know, maintain a 430 pace or 420 pace. Okay. And you're maintaining a four, you ask them to maintain a 430 or 420 pace for you know, half an hour, an hour, but they're not able to maintain that. What does that have in terms of the psychological aspect of training as an athlete? There's a psych, there are psychological ramifications of not being able to meet session goals because of the residual effects of fatigue from resistance training. So yeah, definitely there are some benefits. In, I think with this pre-fatigue approach that you're talking about, Phil, but you just, I think injuries have, athletes have to be cautious of when they implement that. Because like I said, if they're not able to meet session goals, target goals, that's then going to impact, it's going to have a psychological impact, okay? In terms of confidence, it's going to have impact on skill, so the pacing strategies may be altered. So if this, uh, that's going to be stuffed up potentially, um, particularly leading into a race. 